Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 3 of the Resistance Glitch Exhibition Series for Manchester. It has been quite a while, so I apologize for that. Uh, a couple things I'd like to start out. First, I have a webcam. Hello. Um, if that's not well liked, I'll definitely put it away for the recording of these videos. But I don't think it's going to be too big an issue. Um, secondly, I am going to change the format a little bit for these this series. Um, I'm not going to point out every single glitch anymore for a couple of reasons. Um, one, searching for these is really tiring. Um, and that leads into the second point of two. If we use a glitch for the speedrun that, say, bypasses an entire level, um, the only reason it would be useful would be uh, for... Uh, or it would be if it was some kind of sequence break. Which... To be fair, the point of these videos was more tending towards all glitches originally, but going with the first point, it's going to be more down to what's useful for the speedrun um, and what has potential. If I find massive things, I'm still going to put them in the videos, but some levels, like Manchester here, as you'll see, are going to be really uninteresting and it's just going to be kind of like a speed run more than anything kind of like a, a mixture between a speed run tutorial and a glitch exhibition so expect that for some videos specifically manchester um bracknell or not bracknell bristol uh somerset those are going to be a lot more focused on a speedrunning side because there's not going to be too much interesting glitch wise. But anyway, let's get on with the video and I will show you what I do have. So the first thing to note is if you played this level, you probably know how crappy it is. This level is a bunch of waves that you have to push up through, but I've gone through the trouble and gone in and explored all of this. There's only two interesting things in this entire level, and I'm going to blow your mind right off the bat and tell you this whole level you never have to do. Simply from the start, turn around right into this corner. You don't have to jump. I like it. It lines up and push forward so we're now inside this house this wall here is fake and you can jump out this window and we're now out of bounds this out of bounds um it explores the entire level uh the out of bounds is actually much much bigger than um the level i could go that way for not too long the floor there is fake i forgot about that but you see how far back it goes um it's it's pretty pretty massive uh there are quite a number of places where you can jump back inbounds but none of that's really useful because i'll show you the quickest way through out of bounds Sometimes this doesn't like to behave, but usually it's pretty straightforward. So what we do, is we jump through, you turn this way. That hill is real, fit through that alley, and you'll see this huge area. Walk straight through this fake hill here. Over this pit, or around it, up to you. And you're just going to head straight this diagonal direction here. And what you're going to see, for the, what you're going to want for the lineup, I like to go between these two buildings, but you don't have to do that. 
Uh, you're going to see this. This is what you're looking for. If you ever accidentally, say, fall onto this side, I've done it before. I wouldn't blame you. It is possible to get out. It's a little tight, but you could just jump and get out. Most of the ground around here is solid. You, um, I don't know if there's any unsolid parts. So you can explore all the way up to that ravine over there. The level is separated into two parts. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. This half of the bridge, which is all explorable by this out of bounds. The reason you can't do that the other way is there's a massive invisible wall here. And you can always pass through an invisible wall one way, but never the other way. Not always, but if you're out of bounds, you can usually come in. There's a few places you can't. But anyway, this is part one of the level. And then there's part two of the level, which is anything on the other side of this bridge. This, this bridge really separates the, the entire level into two. The only checkpoint in this level is at the end of three waves, uh, and it's about over that way. So, oof, this level is really bad, especially on higher difficulties. And you notice that I skipped an enemy trigger by coming in there. So by doing this skip, the only enemies that I will have to fight are these four. And you may say, but Sarge, there's only three here. Well, there's a howler that jumps up on that wall. Um, <clears throat> a note about that howler. So this, this level doesn't end until you kill that howler over there. That howler actually has the end trigger tied to him. So you could walk around for ages trying to find some way. His proximity trigger is actually like that corner across um so it's pretty hard to not spawn him i never actually explored anything on that side of the trigger because it's really hard to try to get out of bounds with a howler constantly hitting you um and again when you kill him the level ends but i can show you one other thing before i go and finish this level so this car you can hop on it and get on this bridge and now there's an invisible wall here you see but there's not one preventing you from getting on this side of the bridge and this is it's kind of out of bounds but there's a kill plane right down there so if you drop like the moment you pass this point if not earlier you die however you can walk into this wall and no, I messed up. You want to keep holding forward. Um, if you don't hold forward, you'll do what I just did. Um, but you'll, like, stick on the wall, and you'll just bounce along it. I tried to find a good angle for the webcam there. That didn't didn't work. Um, uh, and you'll fall through. I'll show you. I want to point out really quick, if you do explore this place... These soldiers here spawn infinitely. When one dies, another one will spawn in. You can mess with them and hit them out. Um, if you fall down there, though, you actually um, kind of you get zombified. Your grenades can't hurt you anymore, and you essentially softlock yourself. So just a heads up if you ever are exploring and fall in there. But anyway, let's, let's get back across, um, and I will show you... What I was talking about. You know, another thing about it, I might have had a webcam in one of the Grimsby episodes, but I don't think I did. It's been so long. I got lazy, and I really shouldn't have been lazy, but I've been speedrunning Metal Gear, as if you've been following my channel, you probably know. So that was, uh, it was fun. Um, I missed this game, and then I started playing this game, and I kind of stopped missing it but I have some things in this game I still want and need to do just like I have things I want and need to do in Metal Gear but don't want to hang out too long or don't want to be gone too long from any game Did that grenade even hit him no no it didn't 
Oops. Alright. So let me let me actually show you this. <laughs> Sorry. So this isn't gonna lead to anything really super interesting. But so you see I'm hanging on to this. Eventually you're gonna hit that windowsill and it's gonna push you off. Um, but I fell through the kill plane and I landed here. The kill plane is still here. If you walk that way along this path here, you will die. You will hit the kill plane and die. However, there is no kill plane here. And now you can walk this way um, because you are underneath the kill plane. So you can see that the level, it kind of, it only goes that far and then it ends. Um, it's just an interesting little, uh, like, thing, I guess, that they missed when developing this level for one reason or another. Game. So, yeah, that's Manchester 1. Unfortunately, by doing this, you skip every checkpoint, but unless you're playing on, say, Superhuman, it's not really going to be a big issue for you. Um, the Howler might kill you, but it it takes minimal, minimal time to get back over here. So it's not really a big deal, um, casually. Obviously, if you're speedrunning, approach it how you will. Um, you might want to reset if you die in Manchester 1. But I, I, I think you'd, you'd have a pretty hard time dying here. Um, outside of being on a difficulty where you're supposed to die here. I say that because this game is hard. And if you've played it, then you know that even on easy, you're, you're not going to... You know, you're, you're going to die once or twice, even on easy, unless you take your, take plenty of time. So normally in the speedrun, you wouldn't have the shotgun here um, if you're doing uh, any percent. So the fastest way to kill this guy is to use the bullseye. Um, even with the shotgun, I'd argue that the bullseye is faster. Uh, that's up to me. Or that's my opinion. Um, the second interesting thing about this is I'm actually going to lump Manchester into one episode. Um, because it's so short. So, you know, there's just not really anything here. <clears throat> um. Uh. Even though there's three sections of Manchester, I'm only going to put two in. The third one uh, actually does not have anything in it. Um, I've tried. I looked around the level. Uh, unfortunately, pretty much the entire level, you're under attack from one thing or another. Um, which made searching for anything quite difficult. Uh, I think there was a place that had possible two-player use, but it was so minor that uh, it wasn't worth noting. I don't have a second player to help me route this game for even more potential crazy things that can happen. So again, normally you wouldn't have the Rossmore here. Um, you could pick up ammo here, but it's faster to... Actually, never mind. I take the back. It is faster to use the Rossmore. <clears throat> I hate these guys. They just, they just die so slow. Um, so the first big thing I want to point out is through 
Manipulation, uh, you can use grenades, you can use melees. Depending on where and how you hit them, you can shift things around, like these, these beds. Uh, not the pews. But it's possible, I spent a good amount of time doing it, to line these beds and, and this up so that you can actually get from here onto, say, this, onto this, onto this bed, and actually jump at this wall. If you ever decide to waste all your time doing that, um, there are no other real good lineup spots other than this one. There's actually an invisible wall across the entire top of this. So you will it will block you and, and knock you back in. There's actually space between here and the other side over here. But if you did manage to get in there, as far as I could tell, it would probably be a soft lock. Um, and you would have to, you'd get stuck. And now we're just going to do the rest of Cathedral, which is one of the top three worst levels in this game. Just in case, just as a heads up. It's pretty bad. Uh, hopefully we're not going to get any deaths here. We're going to try to do the rest with a, a decent run. Uh, this is one of the longer levels. It does not have any out of bounds at all um you you have to play this level as intended which makes it quite quite slow which is really unfortunate considered how um uh sparse the checkpoints in this level are uh the only three are at the start of the level, um, right after you get out of that building where I picked up the backlash grenades and the two guards came up. And the third checkpoint is on the other side of this uh, little circle. Uh, about in right before in between these things. Or oh, right after it. So I'm going to purposely die here to show you the next thing two howlers came behind me uh you don't have to fight them you could completely ignore them if you want there's really no reason to and that death despawns uh as you may have noticed through this game when they design a texture they really like to copy paste that texture which means if you find the texture one place and it does something it is almost certainly going to do that same thing and have those same properties everywhere throughout the level. Uh, when I do Cheshire, you will you'll notice that a lot. I'll point it out. I'll be like, here's another one of those and another one of those. Um, specifically, Manchester has one of those spots, and that is things like this right here. <sighs> so. You see this invisible, it, it's kind of invisible, but at the same time, you can like wedge yourself in and jump. So if you get on this, a couple things are possible. You can actually wedge yourself in places like this. You can get some decent jumps. Uh, and one of the things that can happen is you'll actually end up down here underneath this pile. Sadly, it's a bunch of invisible walls, uh, so there's nothing else down here. But it is a little cool, you know, thing that can happen. What is more likely to happen is, I'll try it like once to show you, because this is, I just got a checkpoint. Is you're going to go for this, and you're going to end up somewhere... Similar to where uh, I just did. But you're going to end up in a much worse situation. And you're going to get here. Something like this. I can't jump. I can't. I got lucky and I can move. 
but it is entirely possible to actually get entirely stuck here. And you can't do anything at all. Ah, here it is. Here's one. So, I'm, I'm literally stuck here. No movement, no jumping. In this situation, the only way out is to kill yourself. That That's another example of a soft lock in this game from exploring. Unfortunately, the rest of the level, uh, there's only one more thing to note here. It sucked. <clears throat> Uh, we use it in the speedrun. So, the intended route is to cross this bridge, go up there. Uh, there's a enemy trigger about here-ish, I think. Maybe sooner. That spawns about six hybrids up there in a park. As well as, um... I think there's, like, two hedgehogs up there. But what you can do is hop onto this and then just around. There's no invisible wall here. There's there's nothing. Nothing is stopping you from doing this. I don't know if it was an oversight or if it was like a secret route. Uh, it's just like an interesting tidbit. Um, the first couple times you try it, you'll probably miss it. It, it you have to get used to lining it up. But once you do line it up, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward, uh, and you'll probably have a pretty good consistency on it. And then the rest of this um, is pretty much do it as intended. We're almost at the end, but that does not stop deaths from being a thing that does happen here. One of the biggest places is forgetting those hedgehogs exist. Um, these leapers can kill you if you get here and you're low on health. Do be careful. Same with these traps. Um, and then there's a guy, one more guy comes around. Even if you kill everything here, you have to wait for this dialogue to finish uh the end trigger is i think here i think the level's going to end now yeah so like pretty much when you make it to the top you hit the end trigger as long as you pass through that and then the dialogue ends the level will end uh but that one of the few that's one of the few levels that has a dialogue trigger um and a place trigger so if neither of those if the dialogue never finishes the level never ends if the uh trigger is never crossed the level never ends so uh, do watch it i don't know why the dialogue wouldn't trigger this game doesn't have any weird dialogue bugs like the second game does as far as i've seen um but just adds up so this is the third level there's literally nothing of interesting interest here. I'm kind of just going to do a quick uh, how we would do the level uh, in the speedrun. So your goal in this is you want to take the center as soon as possible. When you get this dialogue right here, it means the center is yours. Um, and then once you do that, head around the fountain to the right. There's a whole bunch of health. Um, try to blow that car up before you get here, but it doesn't matter. Surrounding this is just health everywhere. Uh, throw a backlash. You see how many Chimera are out here? You just throw a backlash, and most of these Chimera will kill themselves and automatically trigger this dialogue here, which means that you've hit the second stage of this fight. What I like to do is route over here. There are backlashes right there that you could pick additional one, an additional three up. Um, how many you have here is uh, you want to make sure you end this level with two uh, or with one. Uh, two is preferred. So you can use one there. 
Notice, this is just a natural part of this game. How the Chimera just kind of flew everywhere. The way the game programmed them, it actually put them all on each other. And then causes them to fly out to the point where they're traveling so fast, they actually clip through this wall. For example, that steel head there. Um, it's not too bad an issue. It's almost always that specific steel head who clips through. Um, but it can clip other ones, other weird directions that you have to watch out for. And now the final part of this, I wasn't very fast, so this is going to be a bit of an issue. Um, you have two options. You can either use a backlash or not. If you use a backlash, the stalker is going to be a bit inconsistent because it can hit itself. So it wants to move and not hit itself. Um, if you don't use the backlash, you pretty much want to do what I'm doing here. Put up auger walls and fire at the auger or fire at the stalker. Your goal is to hit its back because even when it's front facing you, uh, your auger shots will go right through it and hit its weak spot. That was a mediocre auger fight. It could go much faster than that, but that's pretty much how it is. If you, I wouldn't recommend the backlash unless you're super nervous about what you're doing. But anyway, that, my chair popped. That is Manchester. Uh, that's pretty much it. We did that in 26 minutes. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the next one out much sooner. Um, I will either do it in three parts or one part, depending on what's more appropriate for the video. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed that. Uh, I guess it's a thing now to say like, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, ring that bell. I mean, it's stupid, but... You know. Anyway, uh, in all seriousness, if you enjoyed the video, um, I do plan on uploading more when I can. Uh, check me out on Twitch at Sergeant Silent. Check me out on Facebook at Sergeant Silent on Twitch. Uh, I'll totally add you uh, if you mention that you uh, watch my streams uh, or run any of my games. Uh, check me out on Discord. Pretty much follow the YouTube, the, the links in the YouTube and you'll find everything. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.